Hey guys, today I'm going to be doing my out of box review for the 100 scale Sandrock Custom Sandrock Kai kit from uh, Supernova. Supernova is, of course, a third party company, so this is not an official Bandai product. And as far as I know, this none of this kit was based off of exactly the Bandai kit, so it all is originally engineered, but of course is copied off of the intellectual property of uh, Sunrise Bandai. So, Anyway, I just want to say thank you again to uh, Hobby Mission for giving me this kit to share and check out with you guys. Again, this wasn't really one that I was planning on checking out, uh, but I'm glad I got the chance to check this out because their uh, Ultron, their Nataku kit that came out a little while back, I know a lot of people enjoyed that kit. That was one I was actually kind of considering buying, uh, but I ultimately passed on, and now uh, they've got the Sandrock out, and now I think their next one they've got coming out is the uh, Heavy Arms. So I, I know there's a lot of people who do like these wing kits and there's a lot of people who do like the, the styling that they're giving to these wing kits. They're giving them, them a little bit kind of different uh, style to them. It's not really particularly to my taste, but um, in this review I'll let you guys know what I think just kind of about the quality of the kit and what you're going to be getting just straight out of the box with this kit if this is something that uh, you think looks pretty cool to you. So, uh, construction of the kit, most of it went together pretty well, didn't really have any problems. I actually finished snapping this about a week ago, so it's actually going to be a pretty good test to see uh, how it holds up, because even with Bandai kits, uh, after given a little bit of time in the box, the connections start to weaken and everything just kind of starts to weaken just kind of gradually over time. And with third party kits, it's even worse. So, uh, this has been sitting in the box for about a week, waiting for me to get around to filming this review. So there is going to be probably some parts falling off over the course of this review. I didn't really have any problems except for the head. The head is where I had some fitting issues with some of the smaller parts and that kind of tends to be the case with these third party kits. The head just has a lot of small pieces going in a very small compact space with very small connections and you got to be really precise with that. Bandai is really good at being really precise with their molds and everything. Third party kits it's a little bit more difficult. They don't have the uh, expertise and the experience and the uh, proper, I guess, like really high-end machinery that Bandai has, of course, right? So that's to be expected. Uh, with third-party kits like this, you have to expect that they're just not going to be on the same level as Bandai kits. That, sh that shouldn't come as a surprise to anyone. But, of course, given a little bit of extra work, they uh, can look pretty cool. So this one does look pretty nice. This again hasn't uh, doesn't have anything to it, any panel lining or uh, stickers. I did use some, a few of the foil stickers, but this does come with a bunch of water slide decals as well. Uh, I wouldn't use those uh, myself on an unpainted kit, so I haven't put, them, put any of them on now, but you can if you want, or just keep those for after painting, like me. Alright, let's get into talking about some of the articulation and things like that. So there are a few stickers here on the head, a little green one there for the camera, which I kind of kind of messed up trying to put that blue on. So one of the pieces that I couldn't really get to fit on well is that little blue one there just in the head crest. The little blue piece just fits into there and I've kind of got it in there, but I think it's not quite in all the way. It actually should be, I think, pushed further back into there. It doesn't really want to fit, um, just have to kind of mess around with that a little bit more later. And the other thing I had with this lighter blue part on the side of the head, when I like push that in, then it would like separate the head parts a little bit and then I push the head back together and it would pop that part out and I just kind of had some fitting issues with that piece on the side of the head there. Kind of got it in there as well as I can now, it seems to be okay. So the head will go up to there. I do like how this little red piece on the chin is just coming to a point instead of it's kind of usually like flat on the end. It's a really small thing, but it is just a really cool, uh, just, just tiny variation on the design that I did notice while I was building it, and it was, I thought, oh, that looks pretty cool. Uh, so the head goes up to there and down to there, pretty standard articulation. Overall, this is going to be pretty standard, just like master grade articulation of what you would expect for a kind of standard master grade now. Nothing like really too spectacular, like the Freedom 2.0 or the GM Sniper 2, but it is pretty nice. So the shoulders will come forward. You can see those that the whole shoulder joint will pull out like that, forward to there. But you don't really want to go up too far, and if you pull up that part in the shoulder armor, you can really only get the arm up to about 90 degrees, not really up that high. Rotation at the top of the arm, a double joint 
in the elbow, but one joint is a little bit tighter than the other one, so you get a nice full bend there in the elbow. And the wrist is just on a ball joint, and the hands have a thumb on a ball joint, and then the fingers are swappable, so it'd be like the regular Master Grade wing hands where you just swap the fingers on them. As you can see, a lot of really nice color separation going on here. That is really good. It's definitely not as much as what you see like on the promotional images on the box and on the manual. Now it's pretty obvious not to expect the kit just straight out of the box to look like how it looks as a painted sample on the outside of the box. But just for an example, I just want you guys to notice this because uh, you'll see on the uh, painted sample it has all these little gray bits. Like this gray is kind of like gunmetal gray here, here here on the side of the arm, here on the front of the chest. Uh, it's just, it, it makes it look like some of that might be separate parts, but I just want you guys to take note of what is actually a separate part and what isn't. Because you can see like here on the actual kit that's um, the front there on here on the arm that's not separate parts. So while obviously painting it is going to give you more details, I just want you guys to uh, just notice what is different in terms of what is actually a separate part or not. Here in the stomach section, not really a whole lot of articulation there. It doesn't really move around too much. It does, of course, turn, but that's really kind of about it. The front skirts do come up nice and far out of the way. Be careful, these parts are really super sharp, these uh, parts here for the skirt armor. So that's a sign of some pretty nice molding there if they're able to get such really sharp points. But uh, just do be a little bit careful with that. These side skirts also will move up and down, and then the back skirts as well move up and down as well. And there's our first part to fall off so far. So the legs at the top do rotate side to side. You can bring the leg up. You have, of course, a nice double joint there in the knee with some uh, knee separation armor. So this uh, knee armor does separate. It slides up, but it doesn't really slide forward at all, so it looks a little bit odd. The knee joint, while you do get a nice um, full bend there, the thigh armor doesn't separate, which you would kind of expect. And then the knee separation is a little bit odd, so it... Uh, it has the range of movement, but the parts don't really move kind of how you might like them to. And then you have this part, which is here. When I was putting this together, I, I wondered if I put that together right. There's a big gap there in the leg. Uh, and once, like on the finish kit, I think it looks fine, but when you're building it, it looks a little bit weird. You're building it and it just looks like you just put one of the parts there in the wrong place, but it is supposed to be there, that gap like that. And it, again, I think it looks fine in the overall design but a little bit goofy if you look at it directly. Here in the ankle, again, pretty standard. It's just limited by the ankle armor a little bit. It's really only gonna go side to side to about there, down to about there, down, up, and back forward like that. And this is another part that does, has fallen off a few times already in just pulling the kit out of the box. It was already falling off this part here on the front. I would definitely recommend just gluing that on. And then up under the feet, you have some nice detail there if you're the kind of person that likes to paint in that detail underneath the feet. Background to the backpack, um, it it's, seems functional, but there's a couple things here. Stress marks on here, so on these connection parts here on the back, already getting some pretty nasty white stress marks there. So I wouldn't really recommend moving those parts around too much. I don't think anything's really going to break, but especially if you're not going to be painting this kit, you are going to have those there. It's really not going to be all that noticeable, but it does look a little bit off. The other thing is just the overall shapes of this. It's like all kind of got this uh, really nice design and then you get to these parts it's just kind of really square blocky shapes. It just looks a little bit lazy like they just kind of had to, to design this very functionally and not really with much uh, style. But of course these are meant to just flip up like that and hold the scythes there and these can move around a bit and the backpack does want to fall off a little bit easy as well. All right, so speaking accessories, the first thing is we get this nice base. So this whole part of the base here, the actual arm part, is copied from uh, Bandai's Master Grade base that they've used for like the Freedom 2.0, the Justice, the Fenicia and Ishida, some Master Grade kits. Still, as of yet, it's not able to be bought separately, unfortunately, but it is Bandai's best uh, base that they make, as far as I'm concerned. So it's great that they copied that. Uh, this base part here is it's kind of styled to uh, look like a metal build base, I think, is kind of what they were going for. So it looks pretty nice, just sand rock custom there, Mokai Master Grade model, and then just the model number on that. So this should work fine, nice that that's included, it's definitely a lot more interesting than just like a standard action base, so that just makes it look kind of nice. And then of course you have the sand rock's main weapon is the beam machine gun. No, just kidding, obviously. Not its main weapon, but it is a weapon that is included with this kit, so the handle will fold down like that, a nice little hook there on the handle is kind of interesting. This stock will rotate back. It's kind of sticky. There we go. OK, 
can rotate back like that, but the way that's set on there, it doesn't really look very useful, so that's probably just going to stay forward like that most of the time. Uh, a little green sticker there for the camera on the front, and then as you can see with this peg here, then you should be able to peg that onto the back skirt right there. Let's just give that a try there. It looks good like that, but it's, it's like just barely plugged in. Maybe upside down it'll fit better. Uh, yeah, that definitely seems to fit more securely in there like that upside down. So that's better. And then of course its main weapon is the uh, heat shuttles. So here we have just the two normal ones like that with the nice metallic silver color blade and these can just be held in the hand or you can uh, fold the handle back like that for when they're stored onto the backpack. But then you also have a set of these crazy ones. These are uh, not really to my taste, but I guess some people might like these. Now, it wouldn't really be the most difficult thing to just scratch build if you like just had the regular Bandai kit and you could just like trace this on some plot plate and it would be the, the lower part here, the connection part that you would really want to trace and then the rest of this you just cut out as you like. But So it's nice that you have a set of both, but there is more. You do also get a set of clear blue blades, so if you want to have those blades in clear blue, just the regular blades or the super spiky blades, you can have those in a nice dark clear blue color. Kind of interesting choice of clear blue, but hey, if they were going for making this kit all look very different, changing the color of that does make sense, I guess. Speaking on different colors, you do have some different choices for the uh, stickers here for the eyes. Now there's a clear part for the eyes, so you can put this solid sticker behind that clear part and then just paint around the black and that will probably look a little bit better. I went with just the standard eye sticker. You can choose between green or red for those. For the cameras on the head and the camera on the machine gun, you only have a choice of green. And then these red stickers are for the shields, which I'll show you here in a minute. And just a reminder, you do have this nice set of water slides that you can use on here again with the sand rock misspelled. It is unfortunate that on all these decals they spell Sandrock without the D. On the base it's correct, but on here it, all the spelling is not correct unfortunately. But it is nice to have those anyway. I really don't think anyone's going to notice that on your actual model kit, so not really the biggest problem. Then you have your uh, Viper head looking shield. Now I did use those red stickers here for the eyes and that camera on the top there for these shields. And then for the second shield I didn't use the stickers, so it's just a clear piece of plastic there. So for everywhere where there's camera stickers on the head, the eyes, it's all just regular clear plastic so you can paint that in any color you want. But again, these parts are also really sharp here. Also had some fitting issues with these black parts on the side. They don't really kind of want to fit on there exactly right. I think you'd have to trim those a little bit to get them to fit on there right, quite nicely. But these will just plug onto the back of the arm. And you can also plug these onto the side of the shoulders here. Now I haven't tried it yet, but we'll try that here shortly. But again, it's just cool that you get two with a Bandai kit, you only get one, so if you want to have those, like one on each side, it is a kind of interesting feature. You get some hand options here, open hands, uh, holding hands, you get closed fists I've got on the kit there. Two sets of holding hands, one set of holding hands that doesn't have any sort of peg in them, and then the other set of holding hands does have a peg in there for holding the weapons. You have an action base connector for connecting it onto the included action base. And then you have this set of weird, like, trilobite bug looking things uh, that are actually for the shoulder armor. So these just go, uh, these will plug into on top of the shoulders like that. Again, I'll show you that here in a second, but as you can see, most molded mostly all in purple here with just some yellow on the top. And this part here folds down like that. You also have this little uh, display rack thingy, which is interesting, and that's actually meant to hold up the uh, shoulder armor and cape when not in use on the kit. So it's kind of a cool thing that that was included. It's interesting. And then, so of course, the last thing is the cape, and it's just uh, a couple pieces of cloth that we use for that. Again, haven't tried it out. We'll try it here in a moment. But uh, my first impression of this cloth is that it actually seems quite nice. Usually with Bandai kits, it's like too rigid or it's too plasticky. This one actually does seem like a pretty good consistency. Now, I left this in the box. I kind of crumpled it up like that on purpose and uh, left it in the box like that so that it would be a little bit more wrinkled. But that's what I would recommend you do if you want it to look a little bit more natural. Uh, do something like that, even like crinkle it up like that and wrap a couple rubber bands around it and leave it like that for like a week or something. That'll just help it look more wrinkled and maybe a little bit more natural when it's falling instead of just like a flat piece. But uh, let's try this out on the kit. Alright, so it takes a little bit of finagling to get everything on there. Uh, and I forgot you do have to also use a connection piece to connect the shield onto the shoulders there. 
uh, shields onto the shoulders, there's an extra little connection piece. So just make sure that you check the manual. I will say one thing about the manual. The manual is not very clear in some parts, especially when it gets to the accessories and like other extra bits you need. It doesn't have like in the Bandai manual where you'll have like spare parts that you don't need are X'd off on the parts list. This has a parts list, but it doesn't uh, X off the extra parts. And there are a few leftover parts that aren't used for this kit. I'm guessing that those are leftovers maybe from the uh, Nataku kit. But whatever the case, just be careful with that. There are a few little bits and bob parts that you need and some that you don't need. So getting this all together was relatively simple, just the way the cloth fits into there. And I still think the cloth does look pretty good actually in use. I think a little bit more working with that, a little bit more wrinkling, a little bit more, I don't know what you could actually do with that. I'm sure there's probably some techniques of like some, maybe there's something that you can like spray on that to make it look more natural, that it's just kind of draping. Right now it doesn't look completely uh, believable that it's a big, huge cloth hanging on a giant 16, 17 meter tall mobile suit. It's not entirely believable, but it does look pretty good. I think it does look okay. Uh, you can, of course, do this in different action poses or something as well. Uh, with the, the arms out because there's a gap there between the front and the back piece of cloth so you could actually have the arms out but I just wanted to just show you guys this in just kind of this uh, neutral pose like this just so you can see how that cape is going to look on the front and the back there. One other thing too here before I forget to mention is that you can plug the heat shuttles here into the back of the shield just like with the Master Grade. I actually really like this a lot. The question is if it's going to be able to hold that up. But the, about the shield, you can actually pull these little uh, Viper fangs here. You can pull those forward and then those can move up and down like so. So you could actually have those uh, curled in like that if you want to have those on the arm like so. But uh, that's just an extra little feature of those. Ah, and once again, here's that uh, little extra base that you get that just kind of holds up the shoulder armor there. It also holds up the extra blades that you're not using. So whether you're using the clear blades or just the regular blades, you can connect those onto there inside this. And this will just kind of be an extra stand to just hold those. So that's nice. You can also plug on the shields onto here if you want, uh, if you're not using those at the time. I'm using, I've got one on the kit anyway, so I didn't want to put just one on here. The balance of this doesn't seem great. Uh, I think if you had like one shield on there, it might be a little bit wonky. But uh, as long as you've got it balanced and, like, uh, symmetrical, it should be okay. And so that's going to pretty much do it for my review of this kit for you guys. On a scale of things, compared to a couple of the recent third-party kits that I've reviewed, um, like, compared to the Cute Cube Wound Wart, this kit is not nearly as bad. That kit was just fitting issues all over the place. This kit, for the most part, stays together perfectly fine. Uh, but compared to something like the Testament Gundam from Dragon Momoko and other Dragon Momoko recent kits that have come out. This one is not quite as nice as that, so I think as far as like third-party kits go, Dragon Mobile Co. is still going to be probably one of the best. Um, this one's not bad though. Again, like I said, if you're willing to put in a little bit of extra work, then uh, then you'll be fine. One thing that I didn't really talk too much about is just like the plastic quality itself. The plastic is a little bit soft and there's a little bit of flash uh, uh, some places and a little bit of area, some areas where you'll definitely want to do some sanding just to flatten them out, but overall the molding quality and the detail quality, everything is pretty sharp and uh, the mold is all pretty nice, so I gotta say definitely not a bad option if this is something that you like the design of. There's a lot of cool options and things you can do with it, the different options for the actual weapons themselves, whether you want to use the clear blades, the regular blades, or the like s standard blades, or the super spiky sharp blades. And the, the two shields, the rifle, there's a lot of different stuff that you can do. I guess machine gun, I should say. You have a lot of options is what I'm trying to say. And especially once the kit is painted, I think it's going to look much better. Even once you add in all the uh, little details and everything, all of that. So could be a really cool kit if you're willing to put in that little bit of extra effort. That's just kind of how the story goes with these third-party kits. So hopefully this information has been helpful to you guys. You can buy this uh, online from a Mission Hobby. I'm sorry, Hobby Mission. I'm still getting that backwards every time, but uh, Hobby Mission, the link is down below. And uh, thank you guys, as always, for watching. Leave any of your other questions or comments, all that down below. See you guys next time. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching. See you next time. <laughs>